This is Create the Next from Pro CFO Partners, where every week we explore strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help today's businesses put their financial picture in context. Welcome back to Create the Next. I'm Chris Bentliff. Pat Balistrieri is with us. And Pat, it's great to have you with us. Uh, we're talking Thank you. Today, we're talking about construction and differences between, uh, I guess, regular accounting, whatever that means, air quotes around regular accounting and construction mm-hmm. accounting. And um, I think this is probably, for a lot of uh, of business leaders, a, a nuanced issue. Uh, they, might, they, might, they might make mistakes along the way to learn the difference between. So, so welcome and, well, and kind of help us to understand some of these, what are some of the key differences that w- construction uh, industry really needs to be aware of and think about differently? Well, the biggest difference in, uh, it, and it's it's one of the things we try to teach the young people when they first start here, is invoicing doesn't always equal the revenue. Because well, when and re- if you think about regular accounting, when I talk about regular accounting, when you invoice, you get a sale and you get revenue. You have cost of goods sold, you sell a widget, you sell something. In construction accounting, you you could invoice uh, in our case a project up front, for example, uh, called mobilization. You could you, so you have a project that you say is a hundred thousand dollars revenue. Your cost you say is fifty thousand dollars, and you're going to make fifty thousand dollars on the project, right up front. You know that up front. Mm-hmm. You could bill sixty thousand dollars up front, send out an invoice, but it's not revenue yet. Because you've done no work. So the way you recognize revenue, the way we do it, and it should be done, is based on the percentage of completion. And how do you measure the percentage of completion? The best way to measure percentage of completion is based on what cost have you incurred. So let's say I'm at $60,000 of cost. And in the first month, I I, I spent $30,000. I've spent 50%. So I'm allowed to recognize 50% of profit in the first month because I've incurred 50% of course. And in our mind, we've we've completed 50% of the job, no matter what I invoice. So sometimes I might invoice that whole hundred thousand dollars up front. So when you look at in a regular accounting book, you'd say, wow, hundred thousand dollars sale, and uh that would be your revenue. But in our books, what we do at the end of the month is we say, okay, where's the cost? Well, we, we're only we're, we're only allowed to to book 50%. So we make an adjustment at the end of the month to bring the revenue in line with costs. We call it overbilling. That's that's the direction we go. Okay, so that's one of the major differences. And I'm not sure if if we might want to approach this whole thing in another conversation. But some obvious questions that come to mind for me are issues. Please give me questions. What do we do with scope creep and and and, and how that might change along the way? And what if costs change in construction? There can be. And I'm oh, no expert yes. in construction like you, but there can be some volatility. So, what if you? What if fantastic you, question? What if things are moved, what if things have moved around? Uh, wow. Unexpectedly, it happens all the time, Chris. It happens every. What we, what we do, and 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 one of the things that I would suggest to anyone who's in a construction industry, and I'm sure they do it. I'm sure they do it. We meet uh, each project. We have a WIC working process that details each project separately, where the revenue is, where the costs are, where the change orders are. What mm-hmm. you're talking about, scope creep. Right, if there are any change orders, how much cost have, have, do we have? Cost overruns. So what we do is we we budget revenue and cost, but the cost we budget by job costing categories, which in our case could be as many as twenty, which allows us to be able to, on a monthly basis, evaluate. For example, labor, project management labor, uh, la- field labor, uh, materials. So every month we look at it and say, okay, we budgeted um, $30,000 for this cost category for this project. Where are we? Well, we're at $20,000, but really we got another 60% to go. We have to make an adjustment to our cost as you're asking scope creep, right? So we make an adjustment to cost, which changes the whole profile of the project. Now all of a sudden your costs go up, percentage of completion changes. And we make that adjustment that month. We do that every month. We look at every single project, every single month, and we make the adjustments every month to either cost. Sometimes you have your revenue goes up if you if you, you put in a change order for extra revenue because let's say the the uh, the manager the, the the GC asks you to do something different or do some another part of a project that wasn't in the original scope of work. 
So your, your revenue would change also. So this happens every month. But you have to, some company, my last company for 17 years, we did it every week. And this company, because we're a little larger and have uh, many more uh, project managers, we look at it every month. Looking for scope creep, looking for additional revenue, looking for savings. Did, did we budget 50 and it's only going to be 30? Can we take a savings? Can we take a profit from it? That's the difference. I so love that I hope that answers your question. It, it does. And it, it speaks to me uh, to the importance of a cadence, an organized cadence to review this stuff so that you're not surprised or, or uh, left flat-footed when you reach like the end of the project and realize you have no profit because everything got eaten up somewhere or you didn't account for this or that, or now you're in a weird situation with, with your client. Talk to me a little bit about that. How important is it to visit these numbers? You mentioned size. So the larger, the more uh, team, the, the larger your team with project managers, the more maybe um, you can spread that out. Or how often should I be making sure that I really have a sense for this? And, and I, I've got my well, You must do it. You must, must, must do it within a month. Now, we have a couple of projects here we do every, every two weeks because they're a little volatile. We want to make sure we're on top of it. But you must look at your projects every month. And the other key to this is, is when I talk about costs or expenses, you Let's say your expenses, you have a very large project. Let's say you have a $10 million project and your cost for the job is $8 million. You can't just look at $8 million. What represents that $8 million? Mm. So we look at job costing. It could be 20 categories, but the only way to really look at it is look at it by category. You can't look at it as, hey, $8 million, I've spent four. Uh, I think I'm running over. No, we look at we look at a category, one of those categories, labor is a million dollars. Where are we with labor? We're at $800,000. How much more percentage do we have to go? How much more time do we have to go? Well, we're, 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 uh, we're not at 80%. We're only at 60%. So we look at that category, make an adjustment for that category. And we do that for each category each month. And at the end, we say, okay, did we, say, did we make money or did we lose money based on where we were last month? You must, if you don't do that, you'll lose total uh, control of the project and you won't know where you're going. It'll be too late. I'd, how dynamic then is your sort of general pricing? Do you, at the end of each of uh, project, do you sort of say, okay, what did we learn? I think we need to start to, you know, uh, put our bids 10% higher next time because look what's happening, everybody, or we're seeing this, or we've got an inefficiency that is eating this up and it's happening again and again and again. What are we going to do? Like, how do you kind of start to diagnose realities going forward from what you're learning in the moment? Perfect. And uh, every company does it differently. Yeah, you have a postmortem. You know, you, you learn things as you go along because if you wait till the project is over, especially uh, some of our projects are $50 million. So you're looking at a $50 million project. You can't wait till it's over to learn something. You must learn as you go along. Hey, hey, we're really, we're spending too much money on, on, on this, on this area. Let's say copper, when copper, the price of copper was going crazy, going up every day, right? We, we, we budgeted at X amount of price and its price is going up. Maybe we should buy it a little sooner. If, if, if the trend is going up, maybe, maybe we should buy it. You must learn as you go along. But the other key to it, and, and I've done this in both companies, is when the project's over. Not every project. Not every project. Because you don't just learn from the projects that you lose. You also learn from the projects you win on. The projects you do well on because you, 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 the mistake a lot of uh, some companies do is they they say well, they only want to look at the projects say hey how bad with the ones we did bad on well I think you learned from the good ones also I know you did because what did we do right so at the end of a pro at the end of a uh, of a period like once a quarter we'll pick a couple of projects and say okay let's look at it let's delve into it and see what we did right and what we did wrong and what we got to do better the next time and companies should do that it's, it's important. I feel like so much of what you're sharing uh, is just sort of great. You could well, any organization can put this in practice with whatever they're doing, even if they aren't thinking of themselves as with kind of as categorically as as you're talking about in construction. If I'm a construction organization and I'm a small or mid market, um, maybe I'm a family business, you know, uh, and I've got a CFO, but some of what you're sharing is new to me or isn't how we're doing things. Like, I guess I'm, I'm asking what insights or advice should I take to kind of recalibrate this? If I'm in a, a small organization that isn't as mature or robust or have the team, how do I start to think about this in ways that 
uh, are helping me in the way you're describing, because right now, maybe I just think about these things in big buckets. Well, we spent four, we've got eight to go. Let's go team. What do I do differently? Well, I, I think, uh, I, I think we all started somewhere, right. And, uh, I've been there, right. I, when I started, I worked for a company for 17 years and the way you learn, you would hope that you learn from somebody like uh, I've learned from people that taught me and there are two gentlemen here that uh, when I retire are going to have learned from me. I mean, what you, what I'm telling you, the most when, if you ask me what to do differently, you must you must not look at the biggest key to me and looking at a project is don't look at it as a whole. You must break it down into categories and look at those categories and be able to evaluate how you're doing. I would tell that to any young person. I have, like I said, I have two guys here right now that that's what they do. They look at and, and I just watch over them. and they look at it every day. And once a month, we get together and we go through it. So it, it's it's uh, it, it's not the big picture. It's the smaller picture. What, what How are we doing in labor? How are we doing in materials? How are we doing in certain? We, we look at, we, we break it down as far as sheet metal versus copper versus, you know, piping. How, how is fabrication? We break it down into those categories. Now, I'm not saying that every company should do that. It's not, uh, it depends how big you are. It depends what you're doing. You cannot, it's not one size fits all. It doesn't. Uh, you know, here we have a, a, a more more categories than we need in job costing. My last company, I, I had uh, probably seven or eight, and I can read I can read the company in in one second, looking at a sheet of paper, a project in one second, looking at one sheet of paper, one project profile. The other key is to have the, the proper uh, software or or computerization to help you get that information. A lot of companies try to do it manually or with Excel or there's a lot of good there's a lot of good programs that we use. The uh, uh, my last company we used uh, Microsoft Dynamics and. It was built, we, we built it just for us. It was perfect. I could press a button on any project and see how we were doing. And, and that's key. You want to be able to quickly evaluate something. You don't want to, you don't want to be able, as a young, per, a young comp, small company, young company, it can't take you a week to understand where you are. It should take you an hour or two to understand where you are. I'm not saying exact. And people who try to live in the exact world, it doesn't work in account. You know, I, I, I'm, we're all accountants. I know we got to balance to the penny, all that stuff. But when you're looking at something, you want to be, hey, how close are we? Because percentage of completion is really not a, it's not a finite thing. One plus one equals two. It's a feel. The project manager feels he's 60% complete this week. He comes in and says, I'm 60% complete, but I've, set, I've spent 70% of my money already, right? He could come in next week and be at, he could say, well, I'm 80% complete. And I'm only spent 75% of my money because the feel has changed. Or in a lot of cases, which happens, unfortunately, in, in some of the big projects, he comes in this week and says, I'm 60% complete and I'm good. And then next week he comes in and he's, and he's still 60% complete, but he spent another 10%, right? It's a feel. So uh, you, in, in, the, in the world of, if I talk to uh, young young count, young CFOs or small company CFOs, you, you got to have, you got to learn that field. You got to be, you have to trust your project managers, and then you learn a trend. You know the project manager that's that understands it. Well, I I know the guys here that I can sit in a room and whatever they tell me is gospel. I know it because they they've held true. But then you got the guy that's uh, that's not exactly there. Maybe he's young. Maybe he doesn't understand it. And you have to spend a little more time with him and ask more questions to understand why he's coming up with those decisions. Everybody's different. It's not, I say it again, one size doesn't fit all. I love how you're touching on uh, systems and processes and reporting and, uh, you know, some technology things. And it brings to mind, and just as you're talking about how you've done so much and you've, you're sharing information in this way and you're teaching these folks and, and you've learned from somebody, does the, does the idea of a fractional CFO, even if I have a CFO, I'm I'm imagining bringing somebody in to help me understand what I could be doing differently, even if I feel like I'm locked in, even if I, I feel like I've been making sense. Some of what you're sharing maybe is like, wow, we really need to look at things. Can a fractional CFO uh, help shed light on that and help me um, create a template for success going forward, even, even if it's a shorter engagement? Oh, absolutely. Yeah. I, 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 I don't know why companies believe that they have it figured out already. Mm. Why not use people who've been there? And, and I've done it even, even in my young, I brought people in myself. I think if you, if why reinvent something when you can bring somebody in that's done it already and they can help you through it. It's no crime. It's no sin to say to someone, Hey, I think I got it, but I'm not really sure. I really don't know. 
come in and help. Let's let's talk about it. And it's a conversation up front. You know, if 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 uh, if I sat with someone in that in that position, I'd know right away in my mind if they need help. Or so a lot of times people don't know what they need. They think they have it. They just don't understand where they want to go or they don't know what they need. So sit down and talk to someone about it. I I, I welcome those conversations all the time. I, I still have I'm having some I meet somebody tonight for dinner to, to talk about something just about that. Like, what what do you really need? Do you really need me? But I can help. You. I can. Why, why not? Take, I'm, I'm 30 years in in uh, in this industry and 45 years in in in, in life. Why not talk to someone and sit down and say, hey, what do you think? What have you done? I've seen everything. I, I had to have, right? At my age, right? <laughs> I've seen everything. I've dealt with a lot of different things. And, uh, and listen, both failures and successes, they both teach you something in, in life. So why not bring in a fractional CFO? Even to say, hey, listen, how about coming for six months and help me look at my company and let's talk together? Why not? Let's go. It'll only make you better. Can't hurt you. Pat Balistrieri from Pro CFO Partners. Um, man, I have really enjoyed this conversation. I feel like there's so much more that we can touch on. Let's and uh, and I love that our our sort of uh, our focal point was construction, but you're sharing a lot that all of us, whatever we're doing, um, I, I you know I'm making notes, mental notes, and and I think that that's always. Um, that's always a great benefit when we can take something specific, but writ large, it's still applicable. And I'm really grateful for your uh, advice and your insight today. And I'm looking forward to new conversations in the future. Pat, bring me back. I'd love to do it. Thank you so much for your time. Thanks, Pat. Thank you. Thanks for watching. And a special thanks to our subscribers. Consider becoming one today. Visit ProCFOPartners.com for more strategies and ideas for financial management and growth to help you put your business's financial picture in context.